In this episode, we are going to finish up our windmill. If you'll notice, I went back in after uh, our last video, and I did put in the bolts, so you can you can see how it looks to uh, have the bolts in there. I think it adds a little something to it; it makes it look a little bolder. Okay, today we're going to put in the fan and the weather vane. And we're going to make it swivel. Now, in order for us to get to, get us in here close so you can see, so that we could work on this, I, I did not make the platform as wide as it, I want it to be. I want it to extend out to that point right there. Okay? So, uh, but I started with it small so we had room to work on the top and not be hampered by it but anyway in order to once we make something a group we have to double click it in order to edit it so let's double click so it puts it in a little box and that way you know the difference between selecting see how it sort of turns blue but when you double you can move it or rotate it when it's blue but in order to change it like we're fixing to do you have to put it in a box that's a double click let's pick up our push pull tool and we're going to grab that surface right there and I want to pull until I get to that point see how I'm touching that point click again all right now let's just do that on all four sides right quick okay click start to move touch that corner all right See how those bolts kind of give it a little boldness? Those bolts are so tiny, though. They look they look huge in this drawing because it's much larger than the real size. But if you tried to put four or five bolts in there like the real world would be, you'd never see them. You, you're barely going to see these. Okay. Now, see? We've, we've made that. Okay. Now. What we're going to do, we're going to have to put us, we want to be able to mount the fan and the weather vane. So we need to bring us a post up here. Now the fan is going to be 12 feet in diameter. And it just has to be that big or, or it's going to be so small. You, you, I, I tried to do one that was 6 feet and it came out to be a half inch across. It was just, there was nothing to it. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to come in. We, we want to put us a three millimeter square post dead in the center of this. All right. Let's 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 take a measurement right quick. I really don't know what we wound up being here. Okay. Let's, uh, let's find center. I think we'll sort of write in this song as I go here. All right, you remember how we find center? You go, put a mark across your diagonals, and this gives us center, okay? So now, what we want to do is we now want to come in. If we want a three millimeter post, we have to put one and a half millimeters on each side of that point. So let's go out 1.5. enter and 1.5 enter now same thing over here 1.5 enter one point five enter okay now let's 
let's uh it didn't do exactly what I wanted it to do, so let's let's go and let's bring us a line in. You might can think of a better way to put a line in the center. Because we wound up with a, a somewhat uneven measurement around here, there's no way to subtract and do whatever if you want that to be exactly three by three. But that's what we have now. We have a three by three square. Let's harden that. Okay. Now let's take our push pull. We want to pull this up. Just start the pull. We want it to go up seven feet because our windmill, the radius of our windmill is going to be six feet, which would be 12 millimeters. So let's go up to go up seven feet, two millimeters per foot. That would let's go up 14 millimeters. We don't have to type in the mil millimeters, just the 14 and hit enter. Okay, now, once again, we need to find the center of that post because we're going to put a hole in it so that we can swivel. We're going to make a pivot point for our weather vane and uh, windmill. Okay, let's turn that where we can see it a little better. All right, if this is three across here, in order for us to get a two millimeter hole, when we're making our circles, remember our circles, uh, you, you have to put in the radius because you, you're going from here out to here. Now, a two millimeter hole will have a radius of one. So put in one and hit enter. Okay. Now, we want to push that down about five millimeters, just just for the sake of enough room. They put in five and hit enter. Now, see how we have a post with a hole in it? All right. That is going to hold our fan and our weather vane. Okay, let's get your selection tool and just click out here somewhere. Now go get rid of all your delete. Let's delete the guides. Yeah. We are ready to put in a fan and a weather vane. But what we got to do is we've got to get that out of the way because I, when I'm working with a round object, which our fan will be, I like to work around this axis. Uh, it's beneficial for me anyway. So what we need to do, I'm going to select all of this. Okay, now let's grab our move tool and let's just let's just slide it to the side a little bit, just anywhere over here. Get it out of our way, and then let's go turn it off. We don't want that bothering us and messing with us. Okay, now here we go. Now the fun starts. We're going to create a fan that has twelve blades. Okay, we need to create us a polygon with 12 sides to it. Watch how we do this. You want you want your uh, poly you want this to be blue, and if it's not, hit your up arrow key, and that'll put it around the blue axis. It'll probably try to find that for you. Okay, now we want to put in. If we're going to have a wind a fan that is 12 feet, it needs to be 24 millimeters across. Okay, that means our radius will be 12. So put in 12 and hit enter. Okay, now, while we still can, let's go. If we go a step beyond now, we can't change the number of sides. But if we want 12 blades, we want 12 points to work with. Watch this. Select that. It's hard to see, but that did turn blue when I hit that. Go over here. See where it says segments? Type in 12. Enter. Okay, see how all of a sudden we now have 12 points? We're going to make a fan blade that goes to every one of those points. Now, this is simply a surface that we're going to work on, and we will turn that off. Okay. But now we already have a surface, so let's call it surface 2. Make a layer. 
because we want to be able to turn this on and off. Surface 2 and go up here and assign that to surface 2. Now we're good. Now we can. Okay. Let's right click and reverse faces here. Now, we also want to make this a group. It has no thickness or anything, but we do want to turn that on and off, and we don't want it sticking to whatever we draw on top of it, so we have to make it a group. Okay, now what we're fixing to do is create us a bushing with a 2 millimeter hole in it. Grab your circle tool, come in here. We want the bushing to have a diameter of 4 millimeters, so it has a radius of 2. So type in 2. All right. Now, we want that hole to have a radius of 1, because we want it to be 2 millimeters across. So type in 1. All right. Now, let's go in here, select that middle, and hit Delete. Okay. Now we have a, see, our bushing has some thickness, okay? All right, for right now, let's select just that, and let's make us a group. All right, and we're going to go over here, and we're going to call that, we're going to name the layer bushing. We'll go up here and assign that to bushing. And we know we get it right if we can turn it on and off. All right. Now, we're not going to give that any thickness just yet because what I want to do is I want to intersect the veins, the weather veins, when we make them. So for right now, we'll just let that be like it is. Okay. Now, let's make us a vein. Let's go up here. What we want... We want to go 2.5 millimeters from these tips. Take your, when your uh, tool palette disappears over here, just click and it'll come back. Okay, now we want to have a, a, our, the tip, from the tip here, we want to go 2.5 millimeters. Well, let's, let's mark that with our handy dandy. All right, type in 2.5. All right, and you'll get a little tiny dot. I don't know if you can see it, right? See how it snaps to that when I approach it? Put another one over here. 2.5, right that edge. Now, we know where those dots are. Let's, let's get our axis out of the way. We know where those dots are so we can take our pencil tool, start down here, get the right tool, start down here, and ride that edge until it snaps in. See how it turns to a circle? That means you're on that dot that we just made. Okay. Make sure your string is still going. And it is. Click. Still going. Find that dot right. See how it turns. Click. And then finish it off. Come back to the middle here. All right. Now we have a vein. Let's also, while that surface is flat, let's pull in. And just at random, just anything somewhat in here, just pull your line across there. All right. Okay, now that we've got our fan blade drawn and we have our surface, let's go turn off our surface too. Okay. Now, let's right click and reverse faces on that. Okay. Now. That little piece at the bottom is not going to matter because we're fixing to get rid of it. Let's take that, this piece right here, and let's go delete. All right. Now, let's take this, and we're going to, we're going to, going to expect, we're going to grab our push pull tool and pull up. Let's pull up by, oh, let's pull up one millimeter. 
Okay. Now, we have us a piece of pie. The reason that we wanted to cut this off is because we don't want these points in here. This hole has to be open to receive the the uh, bar that we're going to stick through here that this fan will ride on. Okay. All right. So now what we want to do, we want to make this a group. Lasso just that. Don't, don't lasso the uh, circles down there. As long as we don't lasso the entire circle, it will not be selected. Right click, make group. Okay. Now, go over here. Make a layer called fan blade. All right, now go up here and assign that to fan blade. Turn it off and on just to make sure we got all of it. And we did. All right. We're moving along. It's, it's going to be nice. It's going to be nice. Watch this now. What we want to do, let's select this now that we've made a group out of it. We want to rotate a copy of this by 30, 30 degrees, if I can get the right tool over there, rotate. And we want it to rotate around this green axis because see how we're laying up against that green axis? Okay. But we want it to rotate from that center point right there. So click, it's not wanting to give me that green one, so it's being a little squirrely with me. So, But I want it to go around that green one. How do I make it do that? My left arrow button. See it turn green? Okay, click. Pull out a string, and you want that line right there to be red because you want it parallel to that. Okay, click and start to ro rotate that. See down here in your data box where it says angle? You want that to read 30. Okay, and it does. So I can just click, and it'll be there. But if, if you can't get it to read 30, type it in and hit enter. But that gives us 30 degrees. Okay, now let's go back down here. This is where it gets cool. Let's turn our surface on down here. And that way we can see what we're doing. All right. Let's take this. It's, it's, notice it's selected. In fact, that's not selected. Click on it one time, and that is. Now, what we want to do is we want to rotate. Remember, when we hit our rotate tool, if we click, if, if we hit our... Uh, control key see that little plus that comes up under there that means what we're going to do is rotate a copy and we want to rotate from the center here see this is why i like to use that blue axis when i'm working with circles and stuff all right click you want this to be blue because you're going around the blue axis click pull out your string and let it rest on that red line click again now we want that copy to go 30 degrees. Look down here in your data box. Make it say 30 and click. And if, that, if you can't make it say 30, type it in. But now, before we do anything else, hit your times uh, key, which would be an X, times. We want 11 copies of that because we want 12 fan blades. The, the reason we went 30 degrees is because if you divide 12 into 360, you get 30. Okay, that's why it's 30 degrees. Now when we make 11 copies of that, watch what happens. Is that neat or what? Let's, let's get rid of that selection. All right. Now, let's turn off our surface. It'll make more, it'll surface too. See now? Kind of looking like a fan almost. Now look, we've got this, remember our bushing down here? And remember, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to double click this because remember we made it a group. So in order to edit that, we have to double click. Now we can push pull that, okay? Start to pull up. Now, I want that bushing to be this thick right here. See where I'm touching the corner? That's the reference point. That tells it, how to, okay, click. Now, see what we've got? We want the same thing on the other side. Go in here with our push-pull tool and start to pull out. Go to a point and reference that. Click. We got us a fan, y'all. Look at that. 
Now, what we want to do, let's take that and let's make a group out of all of that. Even though it's grouped within, we can still group all of that together. Right click and select everything. All right. Well, first of all, we gotta un we gotta unselect that middle where we were editing. Click off over here. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to select all of this and we want to make it a group. Okay, now that we've made it a group, let's go over here and let's create us a layer and call it fan. Go up here and assign it fan. Now, let's turn it off and on. Okay, now select the whole thing. Let's grab your move tool. We're not moving a copy, we're just moving the unit. Get it out of the way. Now, now let's go back over here and turn on Okay, we don't need to turn the surface on. We just want to see. See now. Let me rotate us so we can tell what we're doing here. Now, we want to put this back in that corner right there. And we do that by selecting the whole thing. All right. Let's go down here where this corner is. Always move from corners or a known spot on your... Uh, object if you were just to grab right here you could move it but you you couldn't put it any particular place but if i take my move tool and i grab that corner right there i can now see how it'll snap into that corner let me, let me see if i can get us over there so you can see it I need to move us over see how it sort of see how it sort of snaps into that corner okay now we know we're we're on our axis again Okay, now the fun starts. We're going to make our little swivel thing. First of all, let's deselect. Just leave our fan down there for the moment. And what we're going to do now is we're going to create us a little cube that's going to fit right here. And we're going to do that by going, we're going to grab this corner and we want that cube to be the same size as this. So this was three millimeters. So we want our cube to be three by three by three. Okay, now watch how we're going to do that. To do this, let's just grab our rectangle tool. And let's go from this corner to this corner and create a surface. Grab your push-pull tool and pull up. Type in three. Boom. There you go. See how easy that was? Now, let's take that and let's let's turn off our platform. And you'll see why in just a minute. Platform, turn it off. Now, it leaves this up here where we can make a group out of it. And let's call this swivel. Oh, first of all, right-click and make group. Now, let's go assign it a layer and call it swivel. Now let's go up here in our layer drop down and select swivel. Turn it on and off just to be sure. Okay. Now, if you remember in our, uh, let's turn that off and turn the platform on and you'll see. Turn swivel off, turn platform on. Remember the hole we put right there and we made it five millimeters deep. All right, we want to pull out a rod from the bottom of that swivel and make it four millimeters long. Now watch what I'm talking about. And it'll fit down in that hole, which should make it swivel. All right, so let's let's turn the swivel back on, turn the platform back off. Now let's get underneath here. Now remember how we find center? First of all, in order to edit now, this is this is a group, so in order to edit We've got to uh, double click it. Boom, boom. Okay. Now, 
let's go into here. Let's kind of get those box lines out of the way so it doesn't confuse us. Take our measuring tool. Draw a line across here. Draw a line across here. Now, we want to make us a circle right here. And we want to pull that out. Now, if we made our hole where we had a 1 millimeter radius, let's make this a 0.9 radius. And that gives us just a little bit of room so that it doesn't, if, if you made it the same, it would jam in there and it would not swivel freely. So let's make this 0.9. Okay. Now, let's grab our push-pull tool. Let's turn it a little bit so you can see what's fixing to happen. And start to pull down and type in 4. 4 millimeters. Now, that neatly... Let's... let's uh, Turn on our platform. That neatly fits into that platform. Now, in the real world, once we print that out, this theoretically will swivel because it's got that post in there. All right now, what we've got to do is we've got to make us. Let's deselect that for the moment. We'll be working with it again in a minute. All right, let's get rid of our guides because they get confusing. All right. Let's get back around here to the front. Now what we want to do, we want to come out here with a rod that we can put our fan on. Okay? Now if you remember, we used a 2 millimeter radius. I mean not diameter. Which had a 1 millimeter radius. Again, what we're going to do is we're going to create a rod that has a 0.9 radius so this can swivel around it. Okay, so let's go in here. Let's do the same thing we did. Let's grab our dimension tool. Not dimension, but our measuring tool. Click corner to corner. Okay, now that we know where our center is, let's double click this because we want to edit that. Take our circle tool. Now this... Uh, this rod that we're going to pull out, in order for that uh, windmill uh, fan not to go all the way back up against here, we're going to have to make this rate, the first part of the radius is going to have to be a little bit bigger than the final part. So let's start by making this, just take my word for it, 1.1. Enter. All right, grab your push-pull. And let's come out 4 millimeters. Now, in order to find your, right now it doesn't want to find center, see? But if I go over here and touch the edge, now suddenly, for whatever reason, I have no idea why it will do that. But now suddenly it will tell us where center is. See how it sort of snaps over there? All right. Now, we want this radius to be just a hair smaller than this one, and that way it forms a lip. Watch this. Type in 0.9. Okay, now, we want to grab that with our push-pull tool and pull out by 4. Just type in 4. Okay, now let's come off of that. Now we're going to put our fan blade up there. Go down to your fan. Takes me a minute to get there. We want to use our red axis. See, the, see our red axis right there? And this blade runs parallel to that. So let's do this. Doesn't really matter. I mean, as long as we use the one that's going across here. Uh, take, take our rotate tool. First of all, let's select. Because we've got to tell it what we want to rotate. Grab your rotate tool. And go, go to your... See, see how it finds center for us? Find that center and click your right arrow key. Because you want to rotate around that red axis. All right, now click, pull out your string, and green green is the right color because you're going front to back with your selection right here. All right, click again, and 
pull up to 90 degrees. Okay, click again. All right, so now we have the fan oriented properly and we want to move it now. So let's grab our move tool. All right, see, if you touch that edge, it tends to want to give you the center. See, see how that's the center right there? As I go around that edge, it keeps telling me, grab it right there. Click. Now let's let's go and find all right you have to keep messing with it but anyway touch that edge and it tells you where center is maybe I need to turn around a little bit All right, see how it helped me find center once I got in the right orientation? See how it snaps there? Click it. Now, let's go back here. Look what we've got. See how you got a little bit of fudge room there? But this will not go back here. It stops right there. How neat is that? We're getting there. we got one more thing to do, and that's to put the vein on it. All right, let me show you how to do that. Now, when it comes to printing this, it it tends to my printer likes things flat on the on the plane. We can print this, but it's going to need some supports. Okay, we're going to try to make this vein where it doesn't need supports. Let's create us a box. Let's let's take our measuring tool. Let's go in a half. Go in 0.5. Okay, go in 0 0.5. 0 0.5. And 0.5. Enter. Yeah, that one didn't draw for whatever reason. Sometimes when it, when you go from the center, it won't leave the line. All right, point five. It wants to leave you with a dot instead of a line. I like the line better when I'm trying to make a diagonal. All right now. All right, once again, let's let's deselect and double click. Boom, boom. All right. Uh, this has to be part of this cube. You, you, it, otherwise, it will not dig this hole that we're fixing to dig. Okay, remember our cube is is uh, three inches across. Let's inset that by two. Push in and type in two. Now, what we're going to do, this next part will be separate. It will be a new piece. So click off. Now, let's start this over again. Let's grab your rectangle tool, go corner to corner. Now we can pull that out. Pull that out. This needs to go out 12 feet, so make it 24 millimeters. Now, if you remember, I always like to make this a little bit smaller than the hole that we dug. That way it'll fit up in there without having to jam it in there. And sometimes it won't fit at all if you, if you don't give it a little bit of leeway. But the first thing we're going to do might be easier. Just Let's just, well, first thing, let's turn off those guidelines. Okay, triple click. One, two, three. See how you, you all of it's selected? Right click, make group. Okay, now. Come over here and let's go vein. This will be the weather vein. All right, come up here and assign that. Come down, turn it off, turn it on. All right, now double click because we want to edit this. Take your push pull. Let's come around so we can see what we're doing. We're going to push each side in by 0 0.05. Just type in 0 
0.05. In other words, we want to do this to every surface. 0.05. And then last one, 0.05. Okay, now, see, so you'll be able to put that up in that hole. See, see, have you got a little bit of room right there? That's what you want, just, just a little bit. Now we've got to create us a vein. How are we going to do that? Okay, what we want to do is we want to come out, type in 2. We're going to create us a profile. Now, grab somewhere along in here and pull your line until it snaps to that and click because you were trying to create this line. For whatever reason, it would not let me pull that line out from here without drawing this first. Go figure. Okay, from here, let's go up. And you want that line to be blue. Go up six millimeters. Enter. Okay. Now, again, let's make that line. I don't know why we're having to do it twice like this, but we are. Okay, six millimeters down here. You'll get, you'll get what I'm doing in a minute. Type in six. Now, make that line. Make it snap to right there. Okay, now, for whatever reason, it would not let me draw these lines from these lines, but we can draw one from here. See, now we got a guideline. Let's go back with that guideline about 12. This time, let's take it about 16. What I'm trying to do is create us a pattern that we can now take this pencil tool and do this. Okay, now we got to do it again down here. Now, let's take this while we're in that box, grab our push pull tool. Grab our push-pull tool and pull out. See how I touch that? It makes that all the same. All right. What does that look like? Get rid of our guidelines. Now, there might be a way to make that that might be just a bit big. You you can mess with your design. Uh, you, you could smooth that off a little bit right there. In fact, for whatever reason, I think I'm going to do that. In case you change your mind, let me show you how to make some. Okay, let's, let's slant it a little bit more. I think that would look better. Just go in. Let's go in 10. Take your pencil tool. Oh, first of all, you got to, this is a group now, so in order to edit a group, you must click into it. Get your pencil tool, go from that point to that point, and watch this. To get rid of that, just simply grab your push-pull tool, push to the other side, and boom. All right? Go from there to that point. Grab your push-pull tool, push to the other side, and boom. I don't know. That looks a little better. Looks a little, a little less blocky. All right, let's get out of there. Edit, delete guides, select to click. Y'all, we got us a windmill. How about that? Let's get rid of our... I thought I deleted the guides, but... 
That one must have been outside the box. Let's admire our work. Pretty neat. Uh, you know, the more complex you, uh, the item is you're trying to design, it, it takes a little time to get it done, you know. But on the other hand, that's the fun of the hobby. You know, you don't want a puzzle you can put together in 10 minutes. Otherwise, what's the point, you know? But uh, I'm going to try to find us projects that challenge us a little bit. Me in particular, I enjoy working these things out, you know. I have to do a lot of this ahead of time. Uh, I might even draw it a time or two before you get to see me do it. And even then, I'll, I run into things or change my mind while I'm doing it on the fly. But, okay, now, I think we're going to let this be the end of this video. But we got one more video in the series, and it will be the one where we print everything out. I'll show you how to save all of this stuff in STL files, and we'll print it, and we'll watch it print. But before I go, let's do one more thing. Let's go over to our paint palette. And let's pick out, oh, let's pick out some silver. Paint the blades. Paint the vein. And let's paint our little swivel. Okay. Now, let's find us some brown so we can sort of simulate some wood. Where would I? About that one right there. Everything that's a group, when you click into that group, it'll paint the whole group. Wow, look at this. Now, one final time before we go, let's admire our work. going to be pretty neat when we print it because we will because we've uh, uh, done it in layers we'll be able to print it just like this we can print the uh, windmill or the fan rather and the vein and the swivel and silver and then we can print the stand in brown all right i'm going to sign off for now but i'll see you on the last episode and we'll save these stl files and we will print this baby out and we will take a look at the final product Thanks for watching.